Hey everybody, so I've got a really simple scene here, it's just a control node with two labels, although this is going to work on any kind of object with a visibility property. Right. Now, to get this to work, we're going to go ahead and add a world environment node. And we're going to add an environment, new environment, click into this, background mode, and change this to canvas, although this is only really necessary for 2D games. Then go down here to glow, click on for enable. And uh, for the purpose of this video, I'm going to be changing these settings to 1, 0 0.95, and additive. Additive and screen are really the only two options you're going to want to use here. Screen is just a little uh, less intense than additive. These are totally personal preference. Intensity controls basically how strong the glow is going to be from the item that's glowing, and strength really controls how much that's going to fill up the glow uh, 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 just boundaries there. And then finally, we have HDR threshold, and this should be one, and that's what we want it as, but if it's not, make sure it is one. And the way this is going to work is only things that are greater than the threshold, here being one, are going to glow. And so the way we take advantage of that, for instance, we'll go over to the on label, because I want this to glow, and we're going to go over to, uh, I believe it's custom colors, or no, we'll just go to visibility, I'm sorry. Um, and just go to modulate, you can also use self-modulate, raw, and just set these to a value greater than one. I'm going to set them to 1.2. If you only set uh, one value, like you can see here, it's a more of a, a red tint, but if you set all of them equally, you should get a nice uh, glow that is whatever the actual color of your object is. Here it's white, so we get a nice white glow. Um, and we can go back here. You can see this is a little choppy. You can see a little bit of a blockiness here. Uh, if that bothers you, you can just select bicubic upscale and turn this on. Uh, there's a small performance cost. I have never noticed anything in my games, and uh, you know several of them are fairly complex. Never noticed any kind of drop in frame rate uh, or whatever, but obviously check your game, check your profile, see if that's all working. All right, so I just want to take you guys through a few examples of how you might use this. So this is one scene where I have a button and this like drill animation node, and when you hit the button, the drill turns on. And the important part is we get the button that glows when it's on and does not glow when it's off, right? And of course we have this light on the drill which is glowing right here. Uh, and we kind of got it fading on and off. Now to get the button to work, it's pretty simple. You go down to custom colors and we're changing the font color because it makes it pretty simple here. You've got font color normal and font color pressed. I have it so that when it's pressed, the modulation is over one and thus it glows uh, and, and you know not so for normal. Then in custom styles, I don't actually have this on this one, but on some of my other buttons, um, you can basically go over to these things like hover, right? And if you add a uh, you know new texture box or a lot of these, uh, they have their own modulate property, and then you can make those glow as well. Now with the light here, what this is is we've got a drill sprite, and we've also got a light sprite. And you can see that this is just that light. And then we're turning that modulate on. And what I'm doing to make it glow up and down is just using a tween uh, that just basically goes up. And then on completed, if it went up, it goes back down and then you know backwards and forwards, just like that. Uh, we've got a little bit of a similar scene here with lights. And you can see here, I've got these lights that flicker uh, and these light posts here. And also the moon that's glowing in and out and these stars, just to give you some inspiration. But also there's one more feature here that I think is important. If you go over to the street light, scene which is going to be you know these individually we also add this ray sprite here and this does not have anything modulated in the visibility the difference here is that we add a material a new canvas material just click here and click new canvas material and i went ahead and set this blend mode to add and so basically what that does and you can see that here when we run it is that there's a little extra uh you know glow here where the glow intersects with whatever you put on additive so there's a glow all around here as you can see, but where it intersects here it's a little brighter, so I think that just adds a little extra depth to your games. And then finally you can also add this to particles. And so here's a explosion effect that I have in my game Blackbody. And so there's several things going on here, but as you can see these particles right here, these red particles in the middle are glowing, and then we've also got a shockwave effect right here. And um, this shockwave effect is just a animated node right here as you can see. We can have it play. And then, uh, of course, for the particles, all I've done is go again, and they have their own visibility thing, and we've modulated that. It's important to note that if you change the color in this uh, color property here of the particles, that is, for some reason, not affected by the um, 
glow effect, but if you change it in visibility, it is. So that's gonna be just about it for this video. If you guys found this helpful, please leave a like and comment below. It really helps me and the algorithm out. If you'd like to see more of this content, please consider subscribing. So thank you guys so much for watching and have a great day.